Good morning. So um, today, um, continuing the snippet pixie next journey, um, I, I think it might mostly be a bit of a quick show and tell um, because uh, it's been a couple of days uh, without recording. Um, so at the end of last week, um, I just wasn't up to recording um, because uh, I got COVID. Um, brought home by my daughter, unfortunately. Um, and even though I was double jabbed, um, I still got it. Um, not too bad. Um, just enough to make things uncomfortable. Um, so, um, obviously I have to isolate and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, I think, uh, we left... We left it um, on here in my last recording that I'd um, split the, the snippet package in Snippet Pixie in the new Go version into multiple files. Um, but seeing as I had a bit of uh, sort of downtime, sort of twiddling my thumbs and whatnot, and isolated to my bedroom and things, um, getting quite bored. I ended up just doing sort of maintenance -y type things on the project um, as and when I felt like it. So things have changed a bit since here. Um, so I thought I'll just show you what's changed because um, I was doing all this on my laptop um, and now I need to kind of sync it all back to my desktop that I'm recording on. So um, let's see, um, let's double check what I had here. We've active out manager and setting files within Snippet Pixie. Yep. Okay. So that was in here. It used to be just a snippet.go and it had everything in it. It had all of this stuff. It had all the manager set up for the, da the daemon. So we have a daemon which going to manage the database basically um, and it's also a dbus service um, so when you have uh, a cli for snippet pixie which is for expanding snippets if you want to say hey give me this um the snippet with this abbreviation um the it will talk to the the dbus daemon um, and get back um the whole snippet that you want to expand so you can do that on the CLI um, and eventually there'll be a GUI for managing the settings. Um, and the theory is that the, the daemon um, is also going to be working with the Linux machine as such, the, the system, to do auto expansion on its own as well. So you don't need to use the CLI for that because it's going to be automatic. But uh, And then eventually we'll have a hotkey, which we'll use like a GUI thing to show um um an overlay just i mean like we've got, already got one there so this is my current version of snippet pixie this is the overlay for the hotkey um you can see there's various things i can pick um and i can just go down i can search sp uh, and then just pick it and it's in my buff and whatnot so um but um, I realized that um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to fix up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wanted to fix up um, on this. Um, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. It doesn't feel right to have um, a exposed package here, which has full on mod setup, module setup, um, for public use, which is dealing with the database directly. Uh, that's not right. Uh, all that database stuff should be hidden uh, back in the daemon. The daemon is the, is the controller, is the manager of the user's snippets. Um, and it's things like the CLI and GUI applications, whatever, should talk to the daemon 
to get access to the snippets in a controlled way, in a secure way. Um, so what I've decided, so what I decided to do, I had to look around at what, what people do. So that's the garage. Um, and the idea is apparently is to use internal packages. So if you want to keep the separation, if you want stuff that is used by multiple commands, like we have the CLI command, the daemon, and we'll have a GUI and so on at one point. Um, you also don't just have package as a top level, you have internal. Um, so you would move some of this stuff that doesn't need to be public into like an internal package, uh, which isn't exposed or anything. So that's what I did. So um, I believe I should be able to just do a fetch and it will pick up the first phase of that. And we'll come to why I say that in a minute. So if I pull that. So yeah, so the debug service hasn't changed. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Um, now this is all going to be a little bit confused. Um, because it's quite a lot changed. It's, yeah, it's not going to be happy. Let's see if we can get it to do its thing. It's not uh, doing its sync up, so we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so now we have um, in the snippet, and we only have the snippet type which eventually will have some extra functions on it for actually dealing with a snippet. So I intend to have some form of making sure that the UUID is created in the right format and stuff. So you have a new snippet with the right format UUID and the time the last used is set consistently and things like that. Um, but all the uh, all the other stuff, all to do with the manager and so on, which is only really used by the dbus, uh, the daemon um, is now in here. So we have an internal package which has no mod or any no mod dot, um, go dot mod and so on. It's in here. So it's all just moved in here. Um, we still have all the tests. Um, they all just moved across. Um, and there's nothing nothing really changed there. Uh, we also have settings has been split out. Um, I think I did that beforehand as well. So they're just in there. Uh, don't have any tests in that way. Um, and then snippet is uh, it's the manager's version of snippets. So it's like how it adds snippets or um, what else have we got? Um, we get snippets, um, stuff like that, remove a snippet with an ID, all that kind of stuff, all that functionality that is manager specific. So the, the way that the manager um, deals with snippets, it's all under the manager package, which is an internal package. Um, and then dbus service, uh, the public package, unchanged. Um, it's basically just a, a, an interface um, it's saying, hey, if you want to talk to the dbus service, um, these are all the all the methods that you need to implement. Um, so this is for the client side stuff. So if you want to add a snippet or remove a snippet, and we're going to be expanding on that soon. So that's uh, what I did there, and uh, I also fixed up make files a bit as well. So what I ended up doing was taking um, the go.mods out of the commands as well. Um, because uh, when looking around, um, I realized that you don't need to do that if you're not really going to have them sort of as exposed to packages and stuff. Um, so you can actually have everything at a higher level. I um, mean, it just picks it up automatically. Um, so here we've got a go mod, which is at the top level. Um, and that includes references to the public packages that we've got now. 
um, and then the um, the actual sort of global packages that are uh, used by the project. My wife put some stuff in the pack uh, in the garage. Um, so um, let's see if I can just fix up these things by um, doing a make. I'll do a make clean. I make. I think I've got to make make tidy. Yeah, so we'll go do the stuff. Let's bump up the. There we go. Nice and big for you. It's taking a little while. And while it's doing that, I'll just show you the make file. So it's pretty simple. Um, the only things are, so it's basically, a, it was a copy of effectively what we had, what we have in here. Um, we just have to go tidy and stuff added now. Um, so it's doing its usual stuff. Uh, I don't think we've changed as much. Um, all I've really added is this. Um, Go mod tidy is going to do its own thing now, uh, but otherwise it's just going into all the target directories and making them. Is it done? Yeah. So let's see if that's fixed up all the references. Is it going to understand everything yet? I don't know why it's not doing that. That's interesting. Shouldn't need to do that. Golan's having a little bit of a hard time working out the references at the moment. It's taking them all out. But I'm going to revert that. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm sure it will work itself out eventually. But there's more to it. I've done some more stuff and I need to uh, get onto that quickly. And then I'll be done. So that was the first thing, uh, making sure I've got an internal packages and so on. Um, and now I'm going to close GoLand anyway, um, which might help. Because uh, the next thing I need to actually do um quite a drastic change to that repo checkout. So um I've been using um GitHub uh, for doing this. Um mainly out of habit because um Snipper Pixie has always been on GitHub. Um because originally the requirement was that when I built it for elementary OS, um they only really dealt with GitHub um as a source for um, their packaging set up their tooling um, and so when I just created this new version to tinker with um, I just uh, decided to use snippet um, github um, and just create a snippet pixie um, organization for it just to carry on things um, but I have a few issues with um, github um, uh, mostly just cultural um, and the way people use it um, um, and I do prefer source hub uh, so I ended up while I was um, isolated uh, moving the project to source hub um, I do like source hub it's a lot simpler it's easier it's more sort of straightforward um, and it has um, a bit of flexibility in the way that you can use it. Um, so I'm now hosting the GitHub, I uh, saw the GitHub, the Git uh, Hub. The originally GitHub project is now on Source Hub. Um, and in the process, I also renamed the main branch from main to trunk. Um, I'm not, I don't understand why they're using main as their alternate to master um, on GitHub. I know, I know it's like, you know, people think of like a main branch in trains and things like that. Um, but 
that doesn't make sense to me. I'm old school from using RCS and SC, uh, what S, SCCS first and RCS and CVS and subversion where you have trunk as in a tree trunk and tree branches. Um, so I just renamed the branch um, before I then imported into um, Source Hub. Um, and I kind of wish that I had recorded all that because it was quite a nice little um, thing that might have been helpful to people um, who are trying to do the same thing. Um, probably good content, uh, maybe. Uh, it was relatively easy, um, but you know, if you don't know how to do these things, um, it would be nice to have done that. But I just wanted to do things while I was uh, uh, twiddling my thumbs. So it's now on Source Hut. Um, it's a public repo now. Um, although I do say, please don't contribute, <laughs> um, because it's a learning exercise for me still at the moment. Um, but one of the good things about um, get, uh, Source Hut is that um, you can have you can set it up with a fairly flexible sort of project structure. Um, so uh, this also has now links to the, the main website, but you also obviously have the link to the sources. Um, and I now have some mailing lists as well. Um, the devel's not in operation, you can't post to anything. Um, but the discuss and announce are inactive, uh, available, I suppose. Not using, no, no one's using it because no one knows about it. Um, and then obviously I have an internal tracker that I'm going to start using myself as well as a to-do list. Um, um, and that's an, and that's one of the good things about um, Sourcesight is that you can have a private tracker um, like, a, like the issues in GitHub. Um, so I can have um, on a public repo, I can have a private tracker for managing what I actually want to do. Um, and then people that are actually using the project in the future, once this is actually released, um, can be talking on the mailing list and say, hey, I'm having a problem. You know, they can go into the discuss mailing list and say, I'm having a problem with such and such, and we could end up raising a bug report off the base of that. It's things like that. Um, so, um, so yeah, so I moved it there. Um, and then I did a bunch of changes. Um, so I've updated it um, a fair chunk since then. But let's get those changes into Guidance so that I can have a quick quick show as to what's done there. Not, not a huge amount of changes, I suppose, actually. Uh, just some minor changes. Oh, that was my UPS just kicked in. Done a little test. Um, right, so I'll just do a quick grab of that now. So... So at the moment, um, this checkout is on GitHub, uh, and I need to remove that now. So git remote, I think it's remove um, origin, I guess. Done. Let's check. Yep. And then get remote add origin git at git sr hut enm jones snippet pixie um, and that's one of the other reasons that i did it is um i did this move is i, I do feel like this project's more of a personal thing rather than my business thing um, at the moment. Um, maybe one day there might be some sort of business thing I can do with it, uh, you know, some ancillary thing on the side. But at the moment, it's very much a personal thing. So I also put it into my namespace. Right, let's see what happens here. So, yep. So I should now be able to do fetch and now what's gonna happen there in fact I should probably do get fetch minus P 
yeah, hold on. Before I, before I do that, get branch Monte. Yeah, so I'm currently on main. I could get messy. Uh, yeah, I should just, I'm going to pop into Golan now. Um, just check a couple of things. Well, I guess it'd be easier with the GUI. So I'm now switching because I should remove to the main branch. So let's have a look. So we're here now. Yeah. So if I do a checkout, everything's all done. Okay. So I've now checked out trunk. And that means in theory, let's just do it from here. We'll do another fetch just to make sure Golan knows what's what. And then if I do just a, it should, the pool should be, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. And now, if I just go down here, yeah, so we've got no remote. I'll just make sure that's big enough, yeah. There's no remote for main. So remain can be deleted. Okay. And I should see that now on the command line as well. Good stuff. Okay. So now we're using uh, the trunk branch as our primary uh, branch on Source Hub. Um, and a few things have changed. Um, so apart from obviously the internal stuff that I just showed um, and did last, um, there is now, um, what have I done? I've done, apart from adding, um, much more to the readme. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of stuff I've added to the readme. It just was just before, I think it just said snippet big C, your little expandable text helper. I've added a bunch of stuff, including a build status, which we'll come to in a second. Um, and then actual code wise, um, I've put in a few tests. Um, I've put in some tests for the settings. Um, so we now have, there weren't any tests before. Um, so it just does some very quick add a set in like that. Um, and it all has to be transaction based. Um, and then I just get it to make sure it's got the right data. Then I try and update it and make sure it's okay. Make sure we only get the one, um, thing updated. Um, and then we go get it and stuff again. And then we do some failure tests where we make sure that uh, we try and get a setting that doesn't exist and we try and update the one that doesn't exist. Um, and that was the instigation for um, the slight change on the update settings. Um, previously, update setting, um, it just did it um, and then returned error. That was it, it just did that um, and then returned um, so I did those first two lines here without the result. It just dumped that um, and then returned the error. Um, but what I found was that if you do an update um, and you don't have a record on there, um, you're actually trying to update something that doesn't exist. You don't get an error. Um, you just get zero rows affected. Um, and in this scenario of where I actually use it, which is in the database manager. Um, when you are migrating the database, um, where we actually use it is we get the setting and then we update. 
um, to say, hey, I've updated the schema to version 160 and stuff like that. I had no way of telling whether it actually worked or not. So I may have had a failure. Um, in theory, I would have caught it earlier. But you can imagine if you use an update settings in another context. Um, I didn't have any cast iron way of making sure that I had an update work um, if the road didn't exist. Um, so I had to put some changes in there. Um, so it now gets the result back and returns rows affected, uh, which happens to be in 64 an error. So I've added that. So that was a quick little change as well. Um, so I think otherwise code, I don't think there's a lot of other code changes. Um, let's have a quick look at the history. Um, off we go. Updated the readme a bunch while well, I was just thinking, and then we've got the builds, yeah. Oh, and a simple test on packaging as well. So um, we now have TGZ as a um, make file target, um, and all it does is a tar. Uh, but that was quite interesting trying to work that out. So I ended up saying, these are the binaries I've got. Snippet Pixie um, and Snippet Pixie D. Um, and I need to do this uh, slightly complicated for each. So it goes over the binary and uh, the binaries, sorry there, to get a binary name, which is the which is that, like command CLI um, snippet pixie. Um, and then builds a string effectively that's like minus C, which is the tar minus C, which means hey go into this directory. Um, and so I created the, the dire name for the real path of that. So that would expand to something like home in projects, snippet pixie, command CLI, snippet pixie, then get the dire name. So obviously just chop off snippet pixie. Um, so that does tar minus C full directory name, and then not the dire name, so obviously snippet pixie. Um, and it does have both of them to get the real paths and uh, tar them. Uh, so we end up, um, if I do that here, so if I do a make, just to make sure this is all okay. Actually, I should do a make clean because things have changed. Make test. So that's good. Make. Um, if I do a make TGZ, you can see there it does tar, uh, create a compressed file, snippet pixie dot TGZ, um, using from this directory, snippet pixie, and from this directory, snippet pixie D. Um, and now I have a snippet pixie dot tgz and if i look at that it's purely just so that i could get those binaries into the top directory of it so if i list it we've just got the two binaries in there um, and it's just for testing um at the moment there's no i mean there's no way of it's not packaged at all um but it's a start um as we go on and as we start to actually add functionality that's worth actually testing on vms or whatever i'm going to want a nice easy way of just saying hey here's a new version so that's uh, one thing i did on the make file um and then i wanted to start doing some automated testing um so one of the nice things about um, source hub is it has um, and the ability to run builds on various um, distributions um, of different OSs. Um, so I created one for Arch Linux, which is what I'm running here effectively, and DevOS is what I'm using, but it's based on Arch. So it's a dead easy build here. I just say, hey, I just need Go. Um, here's the source files. Um, do a build by going into the Snippet Pixie checkout. Um, which it does automatically, and do a make. And if that passes, go into the snippet pixie checkout because each each task is in separate shell process. Um, make test, and if that passes, go off and do a tgz, which is what I've just showed you. Um, just makes a tar 
tar, uh, compressed tar. Um, and also I just did a little uh, test here to see whether the artifacts works as well. So uh, when you look at the builds, um, so if I go into builds and I find this arch one, um, there's little snippetpixie.tgz, which I can download. Um, and that's um, on some uh, bucket somewhere, I guess, some sort of thing. Um, and so um, it doesn't really simple, nice logs output for each one. Um, so there's the build, the test, and the TGZ just doing its thing. Um, it's all very nice and easy. Um, and then I've just um, done that for Nix as well, because um, I tend to package stuff for Nix as, as well. So there's already a, a, um, a Nixos Nix package um, Snippet Pixie. So I want to make sure that I can do that in the future. So this is a quick test of making that. Um, it's just doing the quick test to make sure that I can build, but to actually, <clears throat> actually do the packaging is a little bit more involved. So eventually I'll get on to doing that. Um, and I always want to um, support Ubuntu LTS. So um, I can use that image on um, source art builds just to make sure it works. Um, and that uses the Golang Go package. That was interesting. I didn't expect that to work because the Golang Go is quite old on current LTS. I'm not sure what version it was, but it's not the seven. It's not the one seventeen that I'm using in this. So all of um, if you look at the Go mods here, I'm using Go one seventeen. Um, but I'm guess on. I'm not using anything like out of the ordinary new for 117 so it just seems to work um so they've got lts uh, but what i'm really interested in is ubuntu next um which is going to be jammy something or other jammy jellyfish was it um uh in 2022 um so that's getting built and tested at the moment as well. And that is using 17, 117 as the go. And that seems to be fine as well. So um, I think, did I have that up? Yeah. Just double check what version. Yeah, so yeah, it's using Golang 117, which is fine. Um, does the build, no problem. And on that, I'm not doing any artifacts, or whatever. That artifact test was just fear, purely for Arch. Um, so I'll probably be deleting this private snippet pixie thing in due course. Um, but that's it. Um, so everything's up and running now on Source Hub. Um, should probably get that back. Um, usual place um and i did a few other bits and bobs as well um i do in theory have an irc um for snippet picks as well but i mean no one uses that so <laughs> but it's there if people want to chat to me about snippet picks they can do that on there hash snippet pixie or pound snippet pixie whatever you want to call it so anyway uh that was it so i just want to do a little catch up uh video um because i've done a few changes since my last recording while i was uh sitting in my bedroom um luckily i work from home um and if i'm feeling a bit better and stuff as i am now um i can just carry on working so uh, I can do a recording and so on um, and still keep separate from my family as well so uh, happy days I guess um, 
So anyway, uh, until uh, until I actually do a proper recording, um, well, we'll be adding some more to Snippet Pixie next, uh, such as I presume I've done add, I've done remove. Um, I need to move on to doing CLI listing um, before I start implementing either auto expansion using the daemon or maybe a settings UI which would be handy so but either way I need to do the I need to work out the whole listing of um, snippets via CLI as well um, so we'll probably do that first so until next time, um, thanks for watching um, and you take care.